Hi, today we're going to talk about bits. And basically, English bits fall into three categories. Either a Weymouth, a Pelham, or a Snaffle. And we're going to do just a little bit of bit ID. And when we do this bit ID, we're going to talk just a little bit about the mechanics of it. The first thing you should know about bits is perhaps contrary to what your intuition may tell you, the fatter a bit is, the thicker it is, the more gentle it is. So if we look up here at this rubber mouth snaffle and then we look over at this very small it's also a loose ring snaffle and see the difference in diameter from this big fat one to this little tiny one the fat one is going to be much much gentler because if somebody were pushing upon you, would you rather have them push upon you with something big and flat like the palm of your hand or, or little and tiny like, uh, I don't know, a piano wire or dental floss? Probably that would hurt more, the smaller pressure, uh, the smaller area that the pressure covered. So that is what makes a wider bit a gentler bit. All right, and rubber is gentler than metal. So that makes this loose ring rubber mouth or vulcanite bit a very gentle bit. We'll move down to another simple loose ring snaffle. All right, and that's just a plain loose ring snaffle. Got several of those. And again, the thicker it is, the gentler it is, and the thinner it is, the more severe it is. Now we've got down here a D-ring snaffle. That's kind of easy to understand why they call it a D-ring because the sides take on the shape of the letter D. And this D-ring happens to have rollers in it. And some of the rollers are copper. And that's supposed to soften a horse's mouth. Some horses prefer it. Sometimes you have to try different bits out to find out exactly what is the most agreeable on your horse. But a bit with rollers, and this is a D-ring bit with rollers, is an option. Here's a D-ring bit over here, but it has no rollers. They're both snaffles. And let me tell you what makes a snaffle a snaffle. The reason a snaffle is a snaffle is because it exerts direct pressure on the horse's mouth without leverage. So uh, some people think, well, it's because of the joint in the middle, because you see a lot of these snaffles are jointed snaffles. And they identify that joint in the middle as being the component which labels it a snaffle. That's not true, because this big, fat, vulcanite bit, this loose ring vulcanite bit, is also a snaffle and it has no joint. And this little teeny tiny bradoon, this teeny tiny snaffle, also has no joint and it too is a snaffle. Likewise, its counterpart down here is very, very small and it is twisted wire, so that means the surface of the bit which touches the horse's mouth even less, so that may be the strongest bit here amongst the snaffles. The amount of pressure that the horse feels is exactly the same amount of pressure that you exert with your hands. You pull and that's how much he feels. And that is the common denominator with all snaffles. And here we have one more. This one is a full cheek snaffle and it is 
twisted and it's got a copper mouth. That's a full cheek. Here's a full cheek snaffle without a copper mouth and without a twist. So of these two, which one would be gentler? The one without the twist because it's got more surface area on the horse. A Weymouth bit is a curb bit. That means you have leverage. The shanks or the cheek pieces which go down um, give you leverage, which that one has very, very long shanks. So that's going to give you a lot of leverage. So that Weymouth bit is much stronger than that Weymouth bit. Incidentally, this Weymouth bit is a sliding Weymouth. Let me see if I can show you that it slides. And that's a different type of action. All right, and the other thing is, is that when you put a Weymouth bit in a horse's mouth, it is most often a component of a double bridle, so you would have a Weymouth as well as a snaffle. So you would have two reins. You would have your curb rein and you would have your snaffle rein. Then the final type of bit that we're going to look at, the final category, is a pelum. And a pelum, pelum makes two bits out of one really. And this is a pelum and I left it all together so you could see that there is a thinner curb rein and a thicker snaffle rein. And that's got an arch mouth or it's called a half moon pelum. And that is a pelum. And that does not need to have a second bit with it because it's essentially two bits in one. Your snaffle and your curb. Finally, I'm going to talk about Kimberwick bits. And Kimberwick bits I like a lot, but George Morris suggests that although a Kimberwick is a good useful bit, especially in a schooling situation, that uh, overuse of a Kimberwick could result in head tossing in a horse. And I would be the last person in the world to argue with George Morris. So let me at least show you several kinds of Kimberwicks. Here we have a Kimberwick with slots on the side, and that makes it an Uxeter Kimberwick. If it has slots on the side, so you have basically three adjustments. You can put the reins around the whole side of the bit, right here. You put, attach the reins all around so they're loose right here. Or you can attach the reins into this slot, or you can attach the reins into this slot. And however you attach them, that's going to give you a varying degree of leverage on the horse's mouth. And both of these Kimberwicks have a port. Now I'm also going to show you a Kimberwick which is attached, so you'll get to see how it's attached. And the Kimberwick which is attached is also an Uxeter Kimberwick. Now again, this Kimberwick has a joint in the middle that does not make it a snaffle. The snaffle, if you remember, is when you pull, that exact amount of pressure is what the horse feels. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of leverage happening here. So this is absolutely not a snaffle, all right? And it is the slots on the side that make it an Uxeter Kimberwick, not the joint in the middle. I find this a very, very versatile bit. I like it a lot, but again, you have to use judiciousness in choosing any bit. You have to choose one that's safe enough for you to ride in, and in whatever riding conditions you're doing, and also one that's going to be comfortable with your horse, one that he'll respect, but that will keep you safe also, and will, will not inflict any pain on your horse naturally.